Bees, a point at home, but obviously the 10 men probably mean it, you look at it as a point gained. Yeah, definitely. I think when you go down to 10 men at half, half an hour to go against a, a good good team as Boston, I think you've got to, you've got to take points. Um, I thought we defended really well. I thought we, apart from maybe the once they got, got through us, I thought we, our shape and our, our ability to move and, 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 and stuff we've worked on week in, week out, that was ingrained in the players was there to see. And, you know, I think we've got had the best chance on another day. Well, nine times out of ten he scores, doesn't he? And, uh, and we've come away with a great 1-0 victory. But, you know, we can't always win. If you can't win, then make sure you don't lose. And I think that togetherness and team spirit was there in abundance today. Do you, do you see it as a sign of the progress you're making? As obviously thinking back to, the, to where you sort of were when you played at Boston early in the season? Yeah, definitely, because we went to Boston and, and they were very, very good on the day and, and probably beat us comfortably. Um, and they've come here and, and they've changed the shape a little bit, and which is maybe a compliment to us. And you know, they've got two ways of playing in possession, out of possession, which is really, really good. You can see they're well coached, you can see they've got a bit more time than us with their you know, time of the day and stuff. But you know, it's a compliment to, to us that teams want to come here and thinking about us a little bit and what we, what threat we have. And I thought it definitely a sign of progress. What did you make of, of Matt Gravosti and the red card? It, it was sort of a shame it happened to him because he was really coming into the game at that stage. Well, that's it. I think it's a shame because it's the second half. I think we just got a foothold in the game um, and we were starting to look dangerous, especially down the left side. And obviously, it's a professional foul, it's a red card. I just, my only question live would be was he getting the ball? You know, he's, he's dived a lot all game, the lad, and the ref should see that. So, but probably a foul, so we just have to get on with it and move on. What did you make of the of the Jay Harris one? I mean, I'm not saying he would have scored had, had the whistle not gone. I think but it's it... a poor decision because even from where we are, the ball's gone three or four yards forward. So Jay's gone tight within, the ball's gone forward. So it's clear it's our ball. And then as he's made contact with the ball, the whistle's gone, he's booked him. The rest need to start using some common sense. He did the same with their lad. He's blown the whistle. We had it with Deck a couple of weeks ago. The moment he strikes the ball and he's blown the whistle, he can't pull his leg back. So just use a bit of common sense. I know there's somebody upstairs saying, oh, it's a booking, but it's not. It's different if the whistle goes and he, he premeditated the kicks it away to get that, but they've got to use a bit of common sense and stuff like that. And I actually thought he'd let a lot go for both teams. He'd let, you know, tackles go, not bookings. And then, you know, he misses a clear one in front of us and right at the end we should have a free kick on the edge of the box. And they're like the little things where, as I say, not having a go at the ref with that car, but they're the, the, a bit of big decisions that make a difference for in, in tight games. Obviously, Jay Harris came back in the team and was his, his combative self. Um, sort of obviously missing Bowen Dixon with him in depart and I guess it shows that at least you've got the quality there waiting to, to come back in but how much of a miss is Bowen going to be for you? Well, I think just the first time Jay Harris thought it was outstanding I thought he won us the game last week by coming on changed the game um, and he's been pushing to start and it's been difficult to not not to play in to have Jay Harris on the bench is something the other people do really well aren't they you know that, that that's a sign of the, the, the players have got obviously Bowen we, we spoke about it's a big miss you know he's loved by the club he's loved by the players he's loved by the supporters he, he's, he'll go down as one of one Warrington's greatest players that I know of um, and he leaves everyone's blessing. Do we want him to go? No, but sometimes it, you know, the decision gets taken out of your hands by, by, by what he was offered and we've just got to move on. We, we, we all, we're all disappointed but we, you know, we look at the stuff he's done for us and, and all the outstanding goals and assists he's got and, we, and, we, and we're thankful we've worked with him or seen him play. Obviously you never like to see a team go down to 10 men, it's never an ideal situation but you've done some Again, it's very good form style to 10 minutes. Clearly a mould that you feel, these set of players feel pretty comfortable in really, isn't it? Yeah, we've done, we've spoke a lot, you know, early season about you will go down to 10 men, unfortunately. The level of referees that you're going to go down to 10 men. So it's important we have good shape about us and we're constantly working on things like that. And then when it does happen, you don't know when it's going to happen, that they, they can adapt to it. And I thought we were good. And as I say, normally when teams go down to 10 men, they get that extra bit of resilience. And we've got that in abundance. We've got that team spirit and resilience. So it negates the, the extra man and I just thought, you know, teams with 11 men, they try and force it, you know, South Shields here and, and we nearly, on another day, win 1-0. Absolutely. I think from next Saturday, I think it's eight games in 28 days, sorry Jack, it's eight games in 28 days from Saturday. It's a, it's a daunting run at the best of times, but squad-wise, you've got what you've got. How are you sort of, how are you sort of looking at that kind of run of games at the minute? 
Well, that is daunting, Matt. Yeah, I'm not looking that far ahead. We're just looking at Curzon's next game. Obviously, then we go away on a Tuesday. So we just we just work game to game. You know, that's all we can do, and, that, and that's what it's been like all season. Obviously, we have our you know we do our own work on all teams as best we can. But it's, it's the focus generally goes on the next game. Yeah. You have, you have brought someone in, Casper uh, Casper Pasiak. He didn't get on the pitch today, but uh, a guy you feel will will add something to the squad for the next month or so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know we, we've watched him a few times. You know he's highly thought of at Preston, and we've got a really good relationship with Preston, he's, as I said, he's someone who we may be looking at early next year, but to get the opportunity to take him now is a bonus, and obviously the matter getting sent off today you know, gives, gives him an opportunity next week.